I'm Morgan Webb, and my daily video blog, Web Alert, will keep you up to date on the technology news of the day. I'm actually here at Cisco in Los Angeles, and I'm in their telepresence room, and I'm going to be talking to Mike Kish, and he's going to be in San Jose. He is their director of consumer marketing for Cisco, and we're going to be talking about some of the pet peeves that you guys posted on cisco.federatedmedia.net. There were a lot of posts about what really irritates people about technology, um, so we're going to see what Mike has to say about some of them. Hey Morgan, how you doing? Thank you for joining me today. One of the questions, or one of the pet peeves that I actually found very interesting was by a guy named Mike, and he says, I remember back in the day when you would go over to a friend's house to watch a slideshow of their recent trip. It was a very social experience, and he complains that with these photo sharing sites like Flickr and Kodak Gallery, that kind of thing, you lose the social element of watching a slideshow, watching a video of your trip to Ireland. Um, it, you know, I hadn't actually thought about it, but I do see what he's saying. This is a, a big area of focus for us at Cisco, and uh, it's an actual area that we call visual networking, which is really sort of the combination of video with uh, a lot of the social networking capabilities that are available today. And we really think visual networking is going to radically change a lot of the traditional experiences people have had. And I think the example that Mike brought up is a great one, which is for all the promise of technology to sort of bring us closer together, the reality is that there's some limitations to it that creates this this interpersonal gap and a lot of that comes down to the fact that right now most of the internet is is focused around its audio its text and those are not particularly good at conveying emotion or creating a connection between individuals in the same way that you know being in the same room with that person is and, and so this experience you're having right now with Cisco's enterprise version of telepresence is actually considered an in-person experience and what it allows is people who are geographically distant to be able to have a real-time discussion and to essentially feel like they're in the same room and they're right next to each other. I think when people think of technology as something that's limiting them and isolating them, I think in the future hopefully we'll see that it doesn't isolate them but it brings a lot of people together from a lot of different places. Another thing that people really mentioned a lot on cisco.federatedmedia.net about their pet peeves was about DRM and not necessarily objecting to the fact that there exists some control over the content that they want to purchase, but that it's really hard to understand. They feel in some ways like they're being treated like criminals. They don't understand why they can't put it on their iPod or maybe they can put it on one iPod but not others. It's a very complicated system for uh, what seems to be perhaps a, you know something that could be a lot simpler. I think it would be great if there was sort of a, a standard to digital rights management that everybody sort of consistently applied to. But the reality is that DRM sort of sprung from chaos and things that spring from chaos have a tendency to not have a master plan and as a result each of these individual companies has come up with sort of their own unique approach to digital rights management and the person who oftentimes bears the, the consequence of that is the ultimate consumer. You know we do a lot of things on the enterprise side of our business where we can do deep packet inspection so you can understand the nature of the traffic that moves over the network. It's very theoretical that you could have the network sort of understand, well, this is fair play versus this is you know, another form of DRM. And the network could essentially do the translation to ensure that the device that sits at the end of that network is approved to actually receive the content. Now, in the end, I don't think that's a perfect solution, but it certainly takes some of the effort and the energy off of the consumer to really understand and be able to have to manage this on their own and it transfers it to uh, to the network to be responsible for that. So everything right now is going wireless which I think is great and a lot of people are very excited about but we're hitting a wall with battery life. Do you see that changing anytime soon? And the reality is that for every advancement in battery technology, there's a convergence of a capability into the device. As the network becomes more pervasive, as it's available you know, through a larger percentage of a person's day and it provides higher bandwidth to devices that are connected to it, I think we're going to see a lot of the traditional functionality that you've seen on these devices begin to move into the network or move into the cloud. And you're going to begin to realize that a lot of these end devices, they're players and they're phenomenal to be play devices. But the serving of that content, the storage of that content, is probably better served to sit somewhere up in a data center uh, and in the cloud. That's where you're going to begin to see devices that last for 20, 25 hours because the battery is going to be expected to do much fewer things and therefore it's going to be able to last. Thank you so much, Mike, for sitting down with me today. I really appreciate it. I had a good time. Okay. See you, Morgan. Take care. Join the conversation at cisco.federatedmedia.net.